Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Troy Allen Gallant. Welcome to Trigger Time TV presented by Crossbreed Holsters. Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's show. In this episode, Carrie Davis of Dark Angel Medical is going to talk to us about a very unpleasant topic, how to deal with a fracture in the field. Hey folks, Carrie Davis of Dark Angel Medical here. Going to talk to you today about something that happens to people from time to time, and that's extremity injuries or joint injuries, uh, fractures, things like that. We all tend to get some orthopedic injuries from time to time, whether it's your little toe finding that door facing in the dark or something uh, as bad as getting a, a broken femur rolling off of a horse or getting thrown off of an ATV. These things can happen at any time. Bones are also very plentiful with a blood supply. And if those bones break, you can lose quite a bit of blood. Just think of it like this, one rib, you can lose about 200 cc's of blood per rib. You break four ribs, and that's, that's enough to throw you into stage one shock. All right, now, a sprain. Do we know if it's a fracture or a sprain? In the field, you really don't know, especially if it's a joint that's involved. If it's like my wrist or my elbow or my knee or my ankle, we're gonna treat them all the same. We're gonna treat them whether they're a fracture or a sprain. Now, if you've got something like a mid-shaft uh, uh, radius and ulna fracture or a mid-shaft uh, humeral fracture, and it looks like they got an extra joint, it's a pretty good sign that there's a, there's a break there in that bone. It's an obvious deformity. Now, what are we going to splint? Well, in an injury that would be a mid-shaft injury here, we're going to try to immobilize the joint above and the joint below. It's kind of like putting that limb into a joint lock and immobilizing those bone ends from moving around and rubbing around together and creating more Got tissue it, damage and more injury and more swelling. We're also going to look for, like right, I said, obviously rifle. obvious deformity. We want to make sure is that deformity, is there a bone sticking through the skin? If there's bone sticking through the skin, then we have to worry about tissue damage. We have to worry about that bone tissue dying. We have to worry about bleeding and soft tissue injury there. All right. And we'll then we have to down. take care of the we'll bleeding so before killed. we move into immobilization. All right. Something we need to do, when we immobilize the joint above and below, we need to look at circulation, motor function, and sensation before and after the splinting takes place. So circulation, let's do a cap refill. Just pinch their hand, pinch their nail bed, see if it blanches out. If they have fake nails or they have, they have fingernail polish, if it's uh, someone has that on there, grab the skin beside it and blanch it. Make sure it turns back. If it turns white, it turns back pink within three seconds. That's a good indication. Now, unless it's cold or something like that, it may be delayed a little bit. Motor function, Can they? do they have good movement? Do they have range of motion? Sensation, can they feel something? Have them look away, say, okay, look away, and then pinch their, fin their index finger, say, what am I doing? Well, you're pinching my index finger. Great, don't have them looking at it going, what are you doing? Well, you're pinching my index finger. They can see that. We also have to think about, at that point, there's gonna, there may be some swelling going on. So any kind of rings or jewelry, anything like that, need to come off because that can create an impediment to, cir impediment to circulation and that can create a tourniquet effect, which we don't wanna do if we don't have to. Now, again, a big thing is, if, it's, if there's an obvious deformity and you don't have any circulation or you have impaired in circulation, don't try to pull it loose and get it into position. Don't try to reduce the fracture because you may make the injury worse. Remember, first do no harm. Splint it position found and go. You can use commercial splints, you can use improvised splints. They all work the same exact way, but remember, circulation, motor function, sensation before and after the splints app, uh, app applied, and also you wanna do the splint above and below the injured site. If it's a joint, make sure you keep it immobilized. You're gonna treat all of them like fractures, whether, whether it's a sprain or a fracture. The big thing also you wanna remember is to keep these things elevated. Elevation is gonna be key because what that does is it, if you let it down, it's gonna let fluid drain down the arm and you're gonna create more swelling and it's gonna create more pain. So ice it. Ice, compression, elevation. If you have any kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen or anything like that, uh, good old aspirin. If you're not allergic to any of those drugs, you can take one of those. That's going to be great for anti-inflammatory and pain relief. The ice is going to keep the ice is going to keep the swelling down. Elevation is going to keep the swelling down. Pain, the the analgesics are going to keep the pain control down. Keep it immobilized. Keep it in a sling. Keep it safe. Keep it secure. If you have any questions about any of this information or want to get a, one of our classes or follow our follow us on 
on the on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Info at darkangelmedical.com. And most of all, stay safe. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, Osprey Armaments, Troy Industries, Troy Defense, BCM, Bravo Company USA, Caltech, Nemo Arms, Tactical Walls, Dark Angel, Mission First Tactical, EOTech, Mayflower Research and Consulting, Streamlight, Wiley X, and Freedom Munitions.